tuning in through Heart and Soul Zim and Newsday. This is the shift where we have a discussion with women on women empowerment and see and listen to their story. How did they make it? Over the past years, Zimbabwean entertainment industry has recorded growth. But with this growth, men have been dominating this industry. During this time also, bold women have taken up the space with the likes of my titi, Madam Boz, and all the women who are using social media to pave their way and exhibit their talent. In the studio today, we are joined by my Titi, who is going to be sharing with us her journey. How did she start comedy and how she is growing and inspiring other women? Welcome, my Titi, to the program. Thank you so much. So as we start, kindly share with us, what inspired you to get into comedy? Um... Okay, what inspired me to get into comedy is my story, is my life, basically. Like, um, I was married and stuff happened in my life that I felt like I should share with the people. Though most of the stories which were happening in my marriage were sad stories, I decided to educate women, um, telling them about my story, but not in a sad way, in a comic way, rather. So if you check most of my skits, they are very educational and they're teaching lessons, though people will be laughing, but if you look and if you listen deeper to it, there is something, there is a story behind the laugh. So it's mostly it's about my story and some stuff which I pick from the society and issues surrounding us. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to get a bit uh, in depth about your story, but can you share with us how was it for you to start on on a on a ground, you know, from your background, and you want to uh, use comedy to comfort yourself and comfort other people around you. Well, it was not easy. Like it's not easy to break through, but uh, I've been very consistent. I've been, you know, falling and rising, falling and rising. But you know, when you know where you want to go, you won't stop and you won't quit. So I kept. I kept breaking through and some people were even saying it's very funny it's now like five years when I started people were like I ah, know this is just a motto with my paper Shapira. but we're getting to six years and mighty is still there mm -hmm. and mighty is still there mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I remember one of your skits when you were um, sharing about how women want to be put on a profile picture <laughs> and it actually went so viral and people yeah. were excited about it can you just share with us you said um you got into comedy because of your story kindly just share with us your story that profile picture story was part of my story as well okay. because it's not only me but a lot of people a lot of couples they fight over that uh, of which up to now we don't know why you know when you have a partner when you have a wife when you have your loved one why is it so difficult for you to just post them or update them? What are you hiding? Mm -hmm. Some men out there, they post their children. Where is the mother? The mother is in the background. Are you ashamed of your wife? Are you doing something that you don't want people to know out there? Do you have any hidden, you know? Are you doing some shenanigans out there? If you really love your wife, it's not much. It's nothing. As they say, it's nothing. But that nothing is something to us, especially women. We want to be updated and we want to be posted. Let them know that you have a wife. Let them know that there is a mother of your children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and um, your first kit when you decided to say I'm going to film my first kit how was the process for you it was not a skit really mm -hmm. it was I woke up one day and I was feeling so emotional then I shared my story about my status and uh, it was very sad it was a very sad one I was mm -hmm. crying and I was explaining how I got infected by my husband and it went very viral and uh, people sympathized with me but I was like no I don't want people to keep on playing a pity party about what happened to me it has happened we move on so from there I started breaking those stories into skits into comedy and yeah mm -hmm. and in a country and in a society where people say the industry is dominated by men looking back there was parafini there was some kadota was making people laugh mm. and you trying to pave a way as a woman did you face any any barriers with that yes i did a lot of backlash a lot of critics a lot of negativity from people even up to now we get them you know men they feel very threatened by us they feel very threatened so they try by all means to suppress us they say all kind of things, oh, this prostitute, oh, this, you know, what is she doing? Oh, Anna, who knows she But, you know, we have managed to stay in bold. Especially myself, I really don't have um, any fear. I build confidence for myself. I told myself I can still do what a man can do. I can do, because at the end of the day, I gave birth to a man myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What could be the reason that you feel like men are intimidated by women's achievements? Because they know women are powerful. To start with, like I said, I gave birth to a man. For a man to be there, there was a woman first carrying the baby inside. So we are so powerful that we can do anything. Like in this day and age, you see that it's not even men who are working. It's actually women who are working for men. A lot of, even in, in marriages, a lot of women are the men, and the men are just relaxed like this, but some of them, they protect. They don't want people to know I'm the one taking care of my husband. But it's happening. Most of the women are the ones going out there to work. They come back, they buy clothes for the men to look good, trying to make him look representable. But the truth of the matter that she is the man, of which we used to say we want 50-50, but now it's like we are 75. 75 women, and then the rest is the men. So... They do feel intimidated by us. Mm -hmm. And how has been the response with other women in the industry? You trying to, to come to the space, did they receive you? Do you? Did you receive any mentorship from fellow women? Yes, I did. I've got women um, I really respect, women like Zodwa. To me, she's an aunt. She mentored me. I once worked for her as a cleaner. I used to clean her offices. It's very funny. I never dreamt I would be here today because I used to work for her as a cleaner, but I, I had the vision. And I used to tell her my stories. She used to take care of me when I had nothing. I was just coming from my divorce. We even used to go to church together. So she knows my story better than everyone else, but only that she's not vocal. But Zodwa is the one who knows my titi where she came from because she was part of my journey, part of my reality, not part of my social media. But she was there in the real life and she's still there supporting me all the way. She has taught me um, about life, business-wise. I was just like, one day I want to be like her. And I'm still fighting to be like her because she has really done it. She has done well for herself, her traveling agents and the rest of the businesses she does. I, I adore her. I love her so much and um, she does me well. And uh, some other women I can't mention, um, but they are there who really mentor me. I also follow Tilda because I'm so much into charity and she always strengthens me she's like a sister she calls me from time to time because sometimes I face challenges you know when we're doing these charity works people say a lot of stuff oh she's making it through eating donations she's she's benefiting from but Tilda calls me she's like my dear if it's your calling you don't have to stop what people are saying that because when it comes to these things I think I'm the only vocalist in this country who retaliates because I, I don't like to feel like challenged or abused. So most of the time I'm trying to fight back. So sometimes 
I, I fall back and I'm like, no, I want to quit. But they always call me like, you know what, my titi, keep up with that fighting spirit and don't stop. So those are some of the women who strengthen me in my journey and I really, really respect them. Mm -hmm. And you fighting back, some people have described you as violent, yeah. unprofessional. How do you I know, do that? right? Well, what I love about my unprofessionalism is, is paying. I don't have a problem with that because at the end of the day, it's what I put on the table. You can be professional, yet you are hungry and poor. So I really don't focus on what they say about me because at the end of the day, I'm going places. I work very hard for my life. My life is growing and glowing by the day. I got no problems, so I really don't care about what they say. The people I work with know how I work. Especially when it comes to marketing, I think I'm one of the best marketers in Zimbabwe. I work with a lot of companies and every time I do something for them, their sales go up. So I don't think you, we can talk about professionalism when I make a company earn so much money and they appreciate and, you know, so people will always say, being quiet does not make you professional. Being, I don't know, does not make you professional. What you do and how you deliver what you do, that is what makes you who you are. So that professionalism part, I'm not sure way I'm being unprofessional, but I think I am the best of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people have seen women and described women more like sex objects. If you see my titty driving a, uh, a new band, if you see my titty building a house, they'll say there's a man she has slept with. How do you, how do you uh, respond to such allegations? One thing I love and I'm proud about myself is I will never be used so that I can get paid. That's one of the things why most men don't like me. I don't just open my legs like that just because you want to give me something. I'd rather open my legs to somebody I love, not somebody who wants to offer me a job or money or get me into some sort of deals. My deals are clean. I don't need to sell my body. Once you sell your body, you become cheap. They know you are an object, they, they will use you. Even if you make it, but just look at yourself, you are dirty already. There is nothing, you are not proud. People can be proud of you, but you yourself, you know you are not proud because you know how you got to where you, you are. So sometimes you need to really put value on yourself. Don't just allow anybody to use you because at the end of the day, these men will use you. Even for peanuts, they will use you. It's the same as when I travel to Tanzania. That's the reason why I got fired, because I refused to be used. I can't be used just because someone is famous and for me to get this role or for me to get a collaboration. And a lot of women in the industry, they don't talk about it. They sleep with people just for a collaboration, just for a job, just for, you know, they do that, but maybe it's because they are choiceless. But sometimes you'll find that you are you have that power to do it on your own. You only have to be confident. I have been pushing on my own. There is no man who can come and put a hand on anything that I own, from my house, from everything I have, to say, oh, I put a thousand because I did this. It's my strength. So I am very proud. I can stand tall and say I am proud of myself. Mm -hmm. It's not the only way being used as a sex object, you can still do it on your own. That's when they will feel very threatened because once they use you, they are, you become loose to them. It's not easy to approach a woman like me. They know it. It's not easy to call me. It's not easy to propose to me. They know it because I'm very hard like that and I'm very complicated and I love it like that. Mm -hmm. You mentioned how you once worked with, with Zodwa. In that in that um, in those circumstances there are other women who are in the same circumstances I remember one of your your lives you were saying how not marry how not marry you should do all those kind of things for you to grow can you just share with us and share with other people who, who might be in that situation and who might maybe say I cannot do certain things because I'm eyeing for a band or something can you just share with us your journey from there to where you are today okay that's kid I was just trying to 
was it a skit? I think I was shouting, it's somebody. Mm -hmm. Then people just took that part. But what I'm trying to say is, um, you know, when I say these things, I am not showing off, I am not bragging. I am trying to boost somebody's faith and hope. And uh, also trying to tell somebody that life is not about competition, especially nowadays, we are competing for nothing. You mentioned Benz. Mm -hmm. Somebody buys a Benz, you want to buy it, but look at yourself. Do you have enough for the Benz? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it necessary? Yes, it's a necessity to have a car. But if you are not yet to that level of owning a Benz, why can't you do a Vitz? Why can't you do a Mazda, a Nissan, something that you can afford? Live the life you can afford. Live the life you can manage. Don't give yourself pressure. We are suffering. We are being pressured. Sometimes we are being pressured by things which are not there. Mm -hmm. Someone will post a car or post a Range Rover. Oh, I've just bought. It's not hers or it's not his. Then we are pressured to say, I want to, I want to. But then if you follow in the reality, you say, ah, this person doesn't even have the Range Rover. Fake life is now everywhere. Because someone wants to prove a point that, okay, me, I am there, I am the one who's doing it. Be inspired by what you see and what you know in the reality of the life. Don't be inspired by pictures and good quality. Good quality comes from the originality of the reality. So if you see a picture like, oh, I want to be, you will pressure yourself for nothing. Step by step, like I always say, crawl walk, run, then eventually fly. There is time for everything. There is a reason for every season. Your time will come. Just like myself, I'm not even where I want to be at yet. I want to I wanna own mansions. I want to drive proper cars. And I'm still going and I'm still working towards that. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have advocated so much for other women. I remember at one time you were advocating for a woman anger uh, abuse, kwane murume and all that. What would you say to women who stay maybe in abusive relationships or in the name of having a husband? What word do you have for them? So, so many people mock me, they laugh at me, they say stuff about me because I'm a divorcee and I always fight for women and say don't stay where you're not needed. So people misinterpret me, especially men, they think I'm there to destroy marriages. I don't destroy marriages. I actually built, I'm actually a counselor of so many. A lot of people I hang around with, most of them they are married. So only people don't know. And when married people are looking for counsel, they come to me. The funny part, though I'm a divorcee, but they do. Some really respected people in the society, I can't mention them. But they call me, I There are some marriages that you can try to enjoy for a while. But there are some that you really sit down and say, I am a one. Some women are a one. Sex is uh, as marriage, sorry, is supposed to be enjoyed. No to kutu no gara mu marriage. When was the last time you slept with your husband? Sex plays a major role in marriage as far as we are concerned. And then three months you don't even know your husband. It does not touch you. It does not you are just there sleeping, misses something. When you go to church you are celebrating when you but you know you are not happy. Where is he getting it from? What are you doing in the house? Because Kanari Masofa wagasi ombawe. Can I eat property? Some even come from mansions. What are you doing there when you are not enjoying Makonjuka or Raitsago? So, those are the kind of marriages and relationships I always say listen, move. Sometimes I'm not saying move to another man, I'm saying move and stay there on your own. You are better off on, on your own. I actually think I'm better off on my own because every time I'm in a relationship, it drags me back. Oh, I get the wrong guys, I don't know. But this time I told myself, no, this time when I get a man, I'm trying to draw my man, I want a man. I, I think I know nani or above me a bit. Because sometimes you think marriage is about the heart. You take someone with nothing, you groom them. When they now feel they are on another level, they will still run. So marriage is unpredictable. I was able say, but the most important thing, are you happy in your marriage? 
are you satisfied? Of course, in my ups and downs, it's not a garden of roses. But why should there be so much thorns, more thorns than roses? Kono mireji anyanya ma thorns, ma roses are madika isiriyo. Ma roses are nofono kuwanda ma thorns o ito pano nepap. Joga na yaga zara minzwa. And you are there. Ah, murumu ongu e ten years. Ah, murumu e ten years. Vasha zodi. You die bitter. This is the truth that men don't want to hear. The truth that men don't like me for because they like abusing. Your men beat you up every per week. On the timetable. Friday, Uruwa. Saturday, Uruwa. Sunday, I don't know. So, you can't even ask. You can't even ask. People are living with lions. Women are living with men. They can't question. Just to say, Mamuri Kupi. Kuruwa. So, why? What are you doing there? Some people lost themselves, some women. What do I do? Where am I in life? There are some educated women. They don't, they are hopeless. The man is supposed to be your cheerleader. Uchimuitira, achukuitira o. Achukuende sa kuchukoro, uchimubikiro wakunda obas. Shunomuru manot, you don't work. And you don't work. Hey, unonyengwa. Hey, simotajwa zishanji. Kutongo za wati mkazu yu mushu inu je kutaka nyato geza ka. Dino mushu haya. Then he wants to suppress you to make you look like a slave. You look like you are older than your age. Because your man does not furnish you proper. So what are you doing there? Have a man who encourages you, who holds your hand, who supports you, a supportive husband. And it, chauru kuita ichocho, he is supporting nda kukupo kamarika kati wedzira kubasaraku. And it, that's what we call a marriage. A marriage is for people who are there for each other through thick and thin. Not a marriage is it and a paper room at zero. Vamovano, they leave because they are afraid. Machechai, Machechaya. Chechuano, so did you Some are even pastors and are mindful this. Some of them we won't mention, they're not happy. Mufundi, they are the young and young, but the others are the Muscan on Borumongo, the Uyuna Uyuna. But because he's trying to protect the name. You're gonna die. Us nambo vira wafara mo penyu. It's not nice. It's not right. Move. Kana maricha a di divorce, but I think iko ariko kwanto not is no marabisha. Munuga move ya inde pa demu. Maybe your man is there somewhere. Well, not anzi kushkari ni uchingo move. Eh, uno gona umbo mira uchi gadri sa ucheza. But kana jaran be sister, my dear, move. Uka shaya a ufe uriwega. Life goes on. Yeah. In your journey, did you um, have other men uh, supporting your brand or inspiring you in some way? Yes, yeah, sure. no, I have, I have, I have lots of them. Ba no to mbo tawo rani niku main box. Ba mo ba kato kocha veku chandi tawo neja oni opana mo na singa de guta ora but they call you every day. But they just don't wanna be the only guta. Okay, in danchi phone ira mai titi. But it gives me strength, man, because when watch one ingaru one one imsoro, and then they call they like you know what. What you say, the Bobayaga, Pongo Chipenga, whatever you want. Then, when we cut our phone, we want thank you, say. So, they really do appreciate. Mm -hmm. And uh, the nuns are Kufara because they also get inspiration from me. Of course, you are more on the women's side, but Jamunotara Jinem Soro. It's not all of us, but we respect and appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, looking at social media, and how you know people can just comment anyhow Some yeah. people can insult you and all that how do you deal with such attacks like i said before i honestly when i feel the pressure i retaliate but these days i'm not so retaliating because i'm too busy and i've just seen that people like to trend especially with my name mm -hmm. if you don't say my tt you won't trend on social media but if you press the live button and say we are we are in the outer and my tt you see people running both they want to hear mm -hmm. so i've seen that there is something about me that a lot of people don't have that they want to have but they can't have it and they don't want to learn so they rather fight me but as but see the boss at the end of the day what do you want to be known for what are you trying to be famous for? What are you trending for? My views will go matter for what? If you get views and then who are you helping at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. You just want to get views of gossiping about somebody and then what? Do you get what I'm saying? So now I'm limiting on the retaliation. They're not worth 
Munu kana angu dango zikano no muna kuti Dautaura, ame ititwaka zo die and what not But look at the person, what does the person have? Nothing What is the person doing even to the community, the society, the people surrounding? What is she putting on the table? Nothing. She just wants or he just wants to be famous. Saka, I have stopped, Mazuano. Like these days, I have really stopped. And I am rebranding myself. I have seen a great change of myself. I feel the change myself personally. Like, I look at myself, I'm like, wow, is this me? Because sometimes, Kudara, and I go to the and my way, I want I want really allow people to step on my toes but people backing from afar now i think i can allow that now because at the end of the day you won't do nothing about it they always back mm -hmm. after what people say about me people say stuff i'm going to my life okay oh she's a fraud star oh what what oh what not but this is just me backing and at the end of the day there is nothing you will do about it saka i focus on what's on the ground, mm -hmm. not the rest is noise. Mm -hmm. Can we be able to separate my TT from social media from your real life? Yes, those who know me personally, they know I'm a completely different person. It's very funny if you were to ask my kids now, they will tell you that the person you see on social media is not even a quarter away. When I come home from work, I go straight to my bedroom most of the time and I'm doing whatever that I'll be doing. And in my house, people will not believe I'm very quiet. They, I'm very loud on social media, but I'm very quiet. Even in those relationships, people say, Oh, I know Tawari Sando Saga, Chizo Siwa. They can ask my exes. I'm very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> even my exes, I was, even the people I date are like, Are you this quiet? I'm like, Yeah, that's how I am. They actually get shocked. Even if you were to interview them, one of them to ask, I'm a Titiwaninga, what you just say, Pam, 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 Ningem Chidanana. I am so quiet, but I guess people don't understand. That's why they just think, okay, it's Kavawona. Like when I'm in town or I'm driving, someone says, my teeth. I'm like, hi, don't come get some way. Because they are used to, ah, you understand. They think, I'm like, what do you say? What do you? No, we are so different. When I'm in my office, we got to, we end up talking to a good morning in a polite way. But people be like, that's a good water. Kochi, but most of the people are now used to me. They, there are people who know me, like I said, Nambopaya, for instance, Zodwa, Zodwa knows my real life and my social life. That's why you see we never fight. People fight for me to be their friend. People claim that I'm their friend. My real friends don't talk on social media. My real friends who really know me, the rest of them, they are not talkative. They are not loud, but they know me and they respect me. Zodwa is one of them. To me, she's not even a friend, she's an aunt. We've been together, I think, 10 or even more than now. And you've never heard, have you ever heard say, people saying that one has order? Because I know Zivabuti fairly, I know Tokon Yakushika up. Can I chida could die? I know Zoyakushika up. So people who really know me don't have a problem with me. But people who pass through my life, they have a problem. Mm -hmm. They come to my house for two days, they want to overtake. Then I block them, then they start making noise. Because some people want to come and benefit. Like I said, there's something about the name that people always want to fight for. People come, maybe, like a child, like advantage, or like a breakthrough, or like a benefit, or like a and like a benefit. And maybe when they come, they don't find what they're looking for. Then when they go now, yes, they've just been in my life for 72 hours. So those are the people mostly out there claiming to know me. But those who really know me, they are proud of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see you're making great strides also in your music. Can you just share with us how your journey is going? Music was the first before comedy. I worked with Mesim Chen and she was the best girl on my wedding. We were best friends. We are still friends, but now she is in America. I worked with a lot of people. Fungisai, there's a time when I, when I, I did something with her. I worked with a lot of people, but then I was young and unknown. I even recorded, I was uh, 60, my first song, Rure Girero, which made waves on Power FM, and an another one called Nda Pereira. But then, like I said, I then got married to the wrong person. And the wrong person diverted my life to his. So I, there was no more fairly, no music for me. I'm also a fashionista, I design clothes, no more clothes designing. I was now restricted 
curfew. I don't go out with my band. I don't do stuff. And then everything about me was crushed and was put in the box. And I was now just doing move, move in the afternoon, move in the evening. His future was moving. Mine was standing. And when he left, that's when I saw Kut Inga and Shisri Moon. Inga Laivi Yangu Yakato Miskwa Moon. He was like the handbrake. And I started popping out from scratch. Of which I can bring in that tombo Buddha. That tombo in out there. So sometimes these people pull, pull us back, like I said before. Mm -hmm. You have to find the right partner who is supportive. So, yeah. So music, in the case of comedy, in I was like, no, but I was very good at music. Let me try again. Then I started, and now I'm seeing Kuti, I'm blooming because I'm now also working with a lot of artists, a lot of artists, and my collaboration. In people, I know she's like, oh, I know him, but I'm like, it's not like in the Tanga Gwimbanas. People actually think in the Tanga Nas, what a performance. Are we Tonga Imboy? I told Ziva, no, I used to perform. Mm. I was a performer. In fact, I was born a performer because life young, even if you ask my mom, she's always like, my titi, I should be singing and dancing. And in my primary, sometimes I'll be in the garden singing, but I'm a vegetables. My dad was a farmer's girl. My dad was a like my fans and I'm my vegetables. So it was something that was, it was like a prophecy put in, in the future. I want to be this, mm -hmm. you know, up until today it has been fulfilled. So it has always been in me. It's not something that I'm trying. It's a gift. I was born with it and my gifts are just unveiling. A uh, one by one, because my gifts are chocolate mm -hmm. Yeah, some people have seen um, women. Uh, they've said, you know, that of a poor hair down syndrome. In your journey going up, how do you, how do you comment on that? It's so sad that us women are the ones who pull each other down because we are jealous, we are competitive, we are comparing each time. If we stop this business of comparing, yes, comparing is there, comparison is there. You cannot run away from it, but some, the way they take it is just too much. You just hate somebody for looking good. You hate somebody for succeeding. You, I don't know, I really wish, it's my wish, especially amongst us women, let's unite. Let's not fight for a good cause. Let's not, some are the ones who even cause people to fight. Sometimes there is no even grudge between people, but it's the people who want to sparkle the, the, the fire. They are always saying, oh, what about this one? This one is better than this one. Of which between the two of you, you are not even competing, but people are making you two. And it's sad and it's a shame. If only we could unite this, our nation would be a better place. But some women are very ignorant and some are pompous and proud. They don't want to work with others. They feel like, okay, me, I'm too special of which everybody is special in their own way you get so it's a real it's a real challenge in our society i don't know if it's changeable it's not easy something that is just there mm -hmm. that we just have to live with but it's a pity it's very sad but uh, i really wish um to the women looking at me right now there is no need united is better than division mm -hmm. yeah and as we conclude, what words would you give to other young women who aspire to be in comedy and into singing? And also, what word would you give to your fans? Uh, I want to thank my fans, really. Like me, I think I, I've got the best fans ever in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. My fans, they're like my personal people. When I'm in pain, they are in pain. When I'm happy, they are happy. They're very supportive. They're like family to me, and I want to appreciate you for supporting me all the way. It's been a long, longest journey. By now, maybe I would have been dead after all that I go through. But you've been there strengthening me. That's, those are the people I don't give up for. Sometimes I feel like giving up. There are people that I've inspired to the extent that they will tell me their stories, their personal lives. <coughs> oh, because of me, they are here. My titi, because of you, we are this. My titi, because of you, I now own this. I thank you. So I don't give up and I won't give up for you. Thank you. Keep supporting and keep praying for me. It's very important. And also to these young women who want to hit the industry, who want to fulfill their dreams. Don't just dream. Work towards the dream. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, walk, crawl, walk, run. Eventually you will fly. 
it's not your time yet, but your time is coming. You need to keep working and working and working towards the dream. I love you. God bless. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you so much, my Titi, for allowing us to come uh, to your space and have this interview. And I believe that all the viewers who were listening to your story have been inspired and they are able to take your words and action them in their, in their lives. And I'd like to thank all of you who were watching us today. This is The Shift and have a good afternoon.